to take. So give us an idea of who can take advantage of this new path to Tokyo. Well, the really deep teams, you know, uh, you have to remember that the Olympic team is going to be four competitors in the team competition. So if you want to make it as a specialist, this is the route that you take. Someone like Igor Radovilov, who we see right here, he is doing that. Ukraine feels that they can be competitive on the team level they have not yet qualified for the olympics they hope to do that in october in stuttgart at the 2019 world championships to do that they need to place in the top 12 three teams have already qualified china russia and japan so leading things off on vault you said it igor radavila from ukraine 2012 olympic vault bronze medalist big vaults right here very nicely done yes you saw the hop on the landing but he is capable of putting that to his feet and not moving at all actually at the 2016 olympic games he did attempted did i don't know exactly how to call it a handspring triple front so four times around he qualified into the finals everybody was talking about this it's like most people couldn't even watch because it was absolutely frightening but he has the power as you can see here looking he just jams his arms into that table and explodes he's able to kick out and do an extra half turn they actually banned that vault tanneth because it was uh it was considered too risky and too dangerous and believe me i was glad they did it as was just about every other person in the world. I was going to Igor. say, it looks dangerous enough just what he's doing here today. 14.733 for that first vault. But I remember watching that from Rio, and it's just heart-stopping. In fact, if you're curious, just go ahead and take a look back because it is something to see. But nonetheless, Igor Radovilov still incredibly impressive with what he's now still legally allowed to do, according to the FIG two gold so far in this series and you know i'll tell you what he is really chasing something in 2017 he was second to kenzo shirai and many people igor included thought that he was robbed and after looking at it a bunch of times i agree with him he should already be a world champion double pike wow <laughs> really I, I mean see the unfortunate thing about this once again that's three times around in the air someone like igor makes this vault, vault look so easy and it is so far from easy i have seen gymnasts that were capable of doing this vault and they're just a little bit off and boy the landing that they can have is almost catastrophic he has been purposeful and determined throughout the world cup series now we take a look over at the women's competition leading things off on beam from china this is Li chi qualified third to this final and this is her senior international debut. Well, China on balance beam can be absolutely gorgeous. They tend to look like they're not on a beam. They are just tumbling on the floor as she does her layout. Oh. Hangs on. But that is the thing about the Chinese gymnast so beautiful so elegant toe point great extension wow what a series right there connecting all of those things together twenty five years ago twenty years ago all of the eastern Bloc coaches were leaving the soviet union all the different republics traveling all over the world and they dispersed now what we're seeing is a lot of those coaches are going back liang chow who was both sean johnson and gabby douglas's personal coach for olympic fame he is now the head team coach in china and doing a great job a very clean routine overall. Nice dismount, but a little bit easy. In the meantime, Igor Radovilov from Ukraine scoring a 14.833 to lead things off on vault. 
We'll be back with the score for Li Chi from China in just a moment. But first, the United States represented in this men's final by Colin Van Wicklin, the 23-year-old from Magnolia, Texas, the reigning U.S. vault bronze medalist and 2018 world team member who qualified fourth to this final. Big vault, same as we saw from Radovilov on the first one. It was good, but Colin can land a little bit better. Maybe gets into his tuck a little bit early, wants to get his... No, actually, he's pretty good. He's looking at the ground right there. He's got bad ankles, so I'll tell you what, just to put that to his feet, that hurts a lot. Was a member of the powerhouse Oklahoma Sooners. He has three NCAA championships and three rings for the team. And obviously, Colin's great on vault, also on floor, but he says he doesn't want to be pigeonholed as a specialist, that he wants people to recognize his strength as an all-around contender. 14.566 for that first vault. In fact, last season, he was even sporting a bracelet that read, Prove Them Wrong, which he said he could look down at in key moments as a reminder of what he hopes to accomplish. Like I said, he could have done that a little bit better, could have been a little cleaner, but he has said, ever since I was eight years old, I have dreamt of being an Olympian. On the biggest stage, very nice, clean, two and a half. The problem that Colin is gonna have here is that that isn't a difficult enough vault. Well, we will have the judges' scores for Colin Van Wicklin when we come back. Welcome back to the Baku Apparatus World Cup. China's Li Qi now awaiting her score for her efforts on beam. 12.666 is the score in her senior international debut. So Li Qi got things rolling. Now another young gymnast making her senior international debut as well. Here is Anastasia Bachinska from Ukraine, just 15 years of age. We saw her on the uneven bars in the finals as well, where she finished seventh. 2018 Youth Olympic bronze medalist. This is a highly rated mount. American Grace McCollum also does that. We saw her recently at the American Cup. And you know, we were talking about Olympic selection and how it factors in. So beautiful handspring front somersault right there that was gorgeous so three teams as i've said have already qualified on both the men's and women's side for the women it is the united states russia and then china an, an additional nine teams will qualify for the olympic games at the 2019 world championships now ukraine at the last world championships was 20th in the team competition. And at this point, it's very doubtful that they could mount a challenge to be in the top 12 or the top nine outside of the three that have already made it at the World Championship. So this is a potential route. There are additional routes. And as I have said over and over when trying to explain this, it is uber complicated. Many countries don't even really know even at this point all the different scenarios that could come out but a very nice routine right here double back small little step on the landing but very very nice job when you touched on it just understanding this new process for the qualification on paper is one thing but then to strategize as well for these gymnasts is a whole nother ball game 14.599 for the american colin van wicklin on vault but we will do our best to keep you educated on this process as best we understand it throughout this World Cup series. Igor Radovilov with the lead on vault now. Yahor Sharamko from Belarus. And a nice vault. He also does not have the highest level of difficulty. We saw Radovilov, he had a 15.6 maximum score for both of his vaults. This vault right here, out of a 15.2, it's pretty good, pretty clean. Small little adjustment on the landing. What it, It's key to know, though, on both men's and women's vault, 
Like if you're watching the Olympics or World Championships and you're watching an all-around competition, they perform only one vault. If you want to qualify into a major event final, you have to do two vaults, and they have to be different. They can't even be related. So, for example, he entered the horse. How you go on to the vaulting table is the critical part. He needs to do that differently here to not incur a very serious deduction. A score, a 14.5 for Sharamko for that first vault. The 20-year-old qualified in sixth place to this final with a 14.383 as his average score. A little bit of a bizarre run. Handspring double front, and that right there will take him completely out of contention. A 15.2 maximum score for that vault that's a full point off and he'll lose a lot of different tents has a lot of motion when he's running down the runway his arms are going side to side and his torso is twisting side to side which you know if you're trying to gain speed down the runway which is the goal that is a detriment so we will see how the numbers pan out for Sharamko in just a moment. In the meantime, Anastasia Bichinska from Ukraine moves into the lead with a 13.533 on beam. So she will hold the top score as we get set to welcome Lara Mori now from Italy. 20 years old, she missed the beam final at the Cottbus World Cup, but floor is her stronger event. Oh boy, does she hang on. Very popular now. For a long time, the gymnasts weren't doing any type of acrobatic elements to get on the beam, but now we're seeing a resurgence in that. Her series, two layout step outs in a row from a back handspring. Good, but obviously an adjustment and then another very big adjustment at the end of that side flip. This is just really wobbly. She's a beautiful gymnast. Really has a tremendous amount of ability. But it is beam. Nice turn. And see, you know, you only have to do a full turn. She does it with her leg all the way up, which makes it much more difficult. She gets a little bit more difficulty for that. She takes the risk. But in the end, it was a debit in the account because she incurred a bigger deduction. Triple twist at the end. Really challenging. Legs a little crossed in the air. And... I didn't think she was going to get that around, but she does. Yahor Sharamku from Belarus, a 13.866, puts him currently into third place on vault. We'll be back with the score for Lara Mori a little bit later on, but we're going to keep things on vault now for the men. Time for the three-time Australian vault champion to see where he can factor in in this final. 22-year-old Chris Remkes. And he is dynamic here as he is on floor. Double front half turn. Wow. Potentially, that is a vault that can get a gigantic number. Same vault we saw both Colin and Igor perform the handspring double front three times around and then the half turn out look at the body position look how much time he has to prepare for that it just was a little bit jumpy once he hit the floor but I'll tell you what he has a lot of ability right here as he does on floor he, w one of the most difficult routines being done just super difficult elements there yesterday he was just kind of jumping all over the place on the landings yeah disappointing first day of these finals for chris remkis 14.9 for that first vault he actually led the pack in qualifying to this final so bringing in some good momentum yeah that was that's a big number 14.9 igor radovilov 
got a 14.733 on that exact vault. Colin was lower. Another 15.6 vault. Attempting, very difficult, double pike. Oh, and that'll cost them, big time. A very difficult landing, a little bit of limping there. We'll have to see how the judges pan out that score in a moment. The world's best women's amateur golfers will come together at Augusta National Golf Club for a historic championship in April. Don't miss the inaugural Augusta National Women's Amateur Saturday, April 6th on NBC. Back inside the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku, Lara Mori from Italy now awaiting her score on beam. And it is a 12.2, slotting her into the third position currently. Anastasia Bachinska, by the way, from Ukraine, dropping about half a point there due to a penalty. But Yang Hakseon now from South Korea. Oh, baby. So difficult. Handspring, triple twist forward. That's his own vault. And he kind of jarred his internal organs on landing. Landed on his heels. I'm so glad to see him back. He, such a champion, 2012 Olympic champion, also two times world champion. Chris Remkis from Australia, 14.216 there, putting him currently into third position. But so much of the anticipation, as you touched on, Tim, has been centered around Yong Hak Seon from South Korea. Unfortunately, in recent years, he's been dealing with injury, tearing his Achilles just months before Rio, which kept him out of the 2016 games. And it was a 15.1 for that first vault. And the big reason for that is, you know, those crazy vaults we saw earlier, the triple flipping vaults actually started only a 15.6. That started at a 16.0. Another big one right here. Nicely done, and tell you what, really nice to see this young man appearing to look healthy. He's had, as you mentioned, Achilles issues, also a lot of hamstring problems. But three times around, and as you see, he lands on his heels, as I said. Surprising he's able to keep it to his feet, but when you do that, everything in your body, both external and internal it goes straight down and that can be painful he was scheduled to compete at both the first two stops of this world cup series but withdrew from both so this is the first we've seen of him in 2019 and as you said so good to see him back in action up next on beam representing australia this is 22 year old emma Nidov, two-time world competitor in 2014 then again just last year First big test right here, her series. That was gorgeous. Somewhat unusual combination. Really good connection right here. Very popular to do these leaps that start facing sideways now. It upgrades the difficulty level. talked about Liang Chao, the great American coach of Gabby Douglas, Sean Johnson, who is now the head coach of China. Well, in Australia, it's a guy named Mihai Breschen, who, of course, Alicia Sacramoni. Double Pike. And Ali Raceman, he is now travels to Australia for training camps. Yang Hakseon from South Korea, the Olympic gold medalist, waiting for the numbers for his effort on vault. And it should be no problem indeed. 14.970 puts him into first place with just a handful of gymnasts left to go, including his South Korean teammate, Shin Jae-hwan. 
qualified seventh to this final. We saw him at the Melbourne Cup just a few weeks ago where he was fifth on vault. He was actually there as a replacement for his teammate, Yang Haxion, whom we just saw. So nice to see them both here in action. This vault right here, 15.6. Oh, and that, that was actually gorgeous. In the air, really nice power, but nowhere near showing control on the landing. I don't even know. It was at least two, I think maybe three steps. And a step is either a tenth of a point if it's less than shoulder width apart. Good height. So let's see here. That's one. That's a three-tenth step for sure. That's another one. But, you know, talking about Jan Haksun, uh, the uh, reigning Olympic champion is a North Korean gymnast, Rise Gwang. And I've been waiting for both of them to be ready at the same time. Um, obviously, with how the world is today, it would be, it would be a, a really great sporting moment. And I'm hopeful that in 2020 that that can occur. Second vaults, planning a 15.2. Oh my goodness. And he does not do a 15.2. His hands slide on the table and he has to bail out of it. Final gymnast on vault and beam when we return. And we are back inside the National Gymnastics Arena in Baku with Emma Nidov from Australia. She was the top qualifier to this beam final, now awaiting her scores. And 14.1 puts a smile on her face. And for good reason, she moves into first place with just a handful of gymnasts left to go. By far the cleanest routine we've seen executed today. So just three gymnasts left. Mana Uguchi from Japan is up next. This is only her second major international event as a senior competitor. Her first was a few weeks ago at the Melbourne Cup where she took the bronze on beam. Japan has long had the tradition in men's gymnastics. They have been dominant in so many different time frames. The Japanese women are really coming on strong, though. Mai Murakami, world champion on floor exercise in 2017, and then a silver to Simone Biles at the most recent world championships. Japan was sixth place as a team, so they'll also want to go to Stuttgart for the Worlds and punch their ticket, which I'm quite confident they'll be able to do that. And that was kind of a neat shot because what you're looking for is to do beam like it's on floor. And for a little while there, that's the shot we had. Just the dismount. Front layout with a full. A, a very clean exercise, and you know, I think she's gonna do well, but I have to tell you, I, I am just not a fan of some of the beam dismounts being done. They're, they're just, she's capable of doing much more. She doesn't need to, but she is. Well, she's going to have to do a lot more if she wants to rival the score of Emma Nidov. We'll have the numbers from Ana Gucci in a moment as we head back over to the men's competition. Denis Abliazin from Russia, five-time Olympic medalist. Wow, and he gets that around. Handspring laid out somersault with two and a half twists. Now watch his hands on the table, though. They slide a little bit. No, maybe not. I Just right as he was putting them down, I thought they were going to slide, but it's a very difficult vault. It's not as much flipping, but there's a heck of a lot of twisting going on. 15.6 is the maximum score for that vault. Abiyazin representing Russia, one of those athletes 
who intentionally sat out the 2018 World Championships in order to be eligible to pursue individual Olympic qualification through this World Cup series. But so far, early injury has kept him out of the mix. And it was a 14.6 for that first vault. Good, but not great. Remember, it is the top spot from the eight World Cups that earns that ticket. Double pike, really nicely done. Oh, boy. Well, and, yeah, that, that smarts, I'll tell you, even when you are capable and you put it to your feet, this sends shock waves through your lower body and your ankles. They just crunch so badly, but he's able to keep it to his feet. He does take two small steps afterwards, though. So it's a 13.2 for Managuchi on beam from Japan. She moves into second position. We'll have the score for Abuyazin from Russia in a moment. Shin Jae-won, the 20-year-old from South Korea, who was last up on vault, scored a 13.1. And now Marina Nekrasova from Azerbaijan. The audience getting very excited for this next gymnast competing at home. Great atmosphere. Oh, boy. And that will do it right there, unfortunately, for her in this home crowd. Nothing like competing at home, but sometimes it brings with it a little extra pressure. Some people rise to the occasion, and some people sometimes stumble a bit. Do you think it's harder to manage the adrenaline from a revved up crowd on an apparatus like beam as opposed to maybe vault or floor? Oh, well, I think it's easier to harness it on a vaulting or floor exercise. Certainly, it gives you so much more power. But the best ones are able to do it on every event. It's just if you have a super competitor that is just really confident where it makes others crumbles, they soar. She lists Oksana Chusevitna as one of her heroes. She had the opportunity to not only hang out with her, but compete with her the other day in the vault finals. A nice job, but that fall near the top of the routine, that'll take her out. Dennis Abliazin from Russia moving into third place on vault. 14.766 won't approach the standard set by Yang Hakseon from South Korea. Still holding the current lead. But, you know, he shocked his ankles at the end there, and he had basically done the vault with one step, and then he took two small little steps after because it was hurting so much. Final gymnast set to go now for the men. Here is Dominic Cunningham representing Great Britain. And this is his strongest event where he is the reigning British champion. Has two very nice vaults planned. A round off half on. Double front layout off with two twists. Or the same vault that Simone Biles premiered at the Doha World Championships that now bears her name in the women's code of points. So watch, half turn onto the board, then half turn, and then laid out somersault with a double twist. Really good, but a little sloppy in the air. And you know, at the most recent World Championships, 2018, he was fourth on vaulting. And he said it was a great accomplishment, but on social media, ever since then, he said, never wanna be fourth again. He's trying to upgrade that vault, add another half turn to it. 14.6 is the score for that first vault, but at those world championships, just to throw salt in the wound, he was fourth by .009 points. So he knows he's capable of getting onto a world podium at least. And if he adds that extra half turn, that's four tenths of a point. Big vault right here, triple twist. Very nice. Does that excellent really gets a, a great rebound from the table.
exactly what you're looking for. You want to be lightning fast with your arms back to the table, and then you just want to explode. No bending of the arms, no pushing, just rebound. Dominic was the bronze medalist at the Melbourne Cup just a few weeks ago. Another podium finish here would be great for building that reputation. And Marina Nekrasova from Azerbaijan, after a disappointment on B, moves into sixth place. And final gymnast now on beam. She is the reigning European bronze medalist on this event, Marine Boyer from France. But in the sport of gymnastics, beautiful front aerial right here, the ultimate disappointment, in my opinion, is going to an Olympic Games and getting fourth. Just finishing off the podium and not getting that medal. She did that in 2016 on the balance beam. And I can sympathize. I was fourth on high bar in the Olympics and it's really hard to take. <laughs> and I'm not quite, I'm over, I'm not quite sure Tim, I'm over it, Tanith. I was fourth at my second Olympics as well. So <laughs> let's, let's form a club, we'll have some ice cream. We'll work it through it. We'll commiserate <laughs> together, yes. So far, beautiful work here. And France, like Japan, has just been on rocket fuel as of late. They were fifth at the World Championships in the team. Round off double pike. Beautiful routine from Marine. Absolutely gorgeous. Remember, Nidov in the lead. How would you put those two together what do you think uh, they were both really well executed routines very very nice it's going to be close Dominic Cunningham 14.750 he said he never wanted to be fourth again but he's going to have to accept this result this time around and Yang Hakseong the Olympic gold medalist from 2012 tops the leaderboard once again Igor Radovila from Ukraine with the silver and Denis Abliazin, the five-time Olympic medalist, rounding out the top three. And now we see just how close Marine Boyer can keep it to Emma Nidoff from Australia, the current leader on beam. Oh, and it's a tied final score, but you see there Marine Boyer moving into second with that execution score being the deciding factor when there is an overall score tie. And boy, was that close. So Nidov and Boyer go 1-2 on beam.